So you woke up and you craved that next joint or you were going out tonight. It was the night that you said you weren't going to get high yet. People around you were smoking and you just could not resist that temptation or simply you are having a difficult time figuring out how to stop. Should you stop? Do you want to stop? Is this bad for me? How am I going to do this? Whatever the questioning may be. In this video, we're going to go over video number four from this video series that we've been doing about changing your relationship to cannabis, whether that's stopping completely, whether that's managing your use, cutting down, cutting back, whatever the case may be. My name is Mike. I'm a long term, I'm in long term recovery from cannabis addiction and other mental health problems. I'm a therapist and someone who just wants to help you increase your capacity for resilience and well being. This is the Starts With Me channel. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into video number four from the series that we've been watching. Do you sometimes wonder if your cannabis use is out of control? Does the prospect of not being able to use make you anxious or worried? Do you have problems with your memory or concentration from using cannabis? Do you use more cannabis than you need to or more than you want to? Do you wish you could stop using cannabis? If you want to cut back or stop your cannabis use, be clear about the reasons behind it. This will increase your chances of success. Make a list of all the reasons you want to cut back or quit. Maybe you want to improve your concentration or your memory or be a better partner or parent. I want to pause there for a second and look at these questions. These are pretty standard questions when people are contemplating whether or not they have a problem. If you want to see my video series on the 12 questions of whether or not you have a problem with cannabis, click on the little card up here, check them out. They're in, the, in a playlist on the channel. Nevertheless, these questions matter. They're important. And if you're contemplating them, struggling with them, considering whether or not these things matter to you, I really suggest you go and check those things out. Okay, let's get back to the video. If you want to cut back or stop your cannabis use, be clear about the reasons behind it. This will increase your chances of success. Make a list of all the reasons you want to cut back or quit. Maybe you want to improve your concentration or your memory, or be a better partner or parent. If you want to cut back, write down what it means to you. Be specific about how often you will use and how much you will use at a time. Maybe you want to use only on weekends or use only a small amount. Maybe you want to plan for breaks in cannabis use, like taking a week or a month off. Plan ahead for your triggers. If you use cannabis at home, don't keep it around. If you use at certain events or around certain people, think about how you will deal with those situations. Let others know that you are changing your use and would like their support. Some people experience cannabis withdrawal. You might be irritable or anxious or have a headache, fever or chills, reduced appetite or trouble sleeping. Most physical symptoms will pass in a few days. Mental symptoms like urges or cravings might take a bit longer. Be gentle with yourself, rest, drink plenty of water, and avoid caffeine. When you have a craving, try to distract yourself by keeping busy. If you don't give in, it will pass. Okay, just jumping in there. It's going to get into my a little clip from me in the video series. Anyhow, those questions, planning days, taking a break, trying to control your using, all that kind of stuff. Now, that can all be useful and helpful, especially for people that, in my opinion, have not crossed the line to no return. Some people, like myself, controlled using only on weekends, et cetera, all that kind of idea is not an option for me. And many people are in that category. If you're in the other category, those tips can be useful and those tips can be helpful. And they're also bringing up this idea of people, places, and things that are helpful to know, right? Where, if I am trying to cut back, change my use, perhaps I shouldn't hang around all my stoner friends. Perhaps I shouldn't go to places that make it more likely that I'm going to get high. So those are obvious tips that we can incorporate into a plan. If you're in the group of people who can control their using, who can shift their experience. For the rest of us, that's not an option. And to me, that's just more excuse making, more trying to manage the unmanageable. You got to figure out where you are on that spectrum. All right, back to the video. I knew pretty quickly that my using was 
a problem. My conscience told me your use is not healthy and I just ignored that over and over until the point where I couldn't ignore it anymore. And once I could surrender to this illusion that I could control my using, I was free to ask for help. When I asked for help, I was encouraged to go to an outpatient recovery program, which was really, really helpful. In that program, I started to discover other resources, 12-step and peer support groups. I managed to find OHIP-covered psychotherapy. I started to develop a mindfulness practice. I learned that I can't do it alone. You are not alone. There are many people out there that want to help. You deserve to feel better. And you can feel better. Many people cut back or quit cannabis on their own. But if you have difficulty, there are other resources. Talk to your doctor if you need help. Okay, so they suggest talking to your doctor if you need help. That can definitely be an option. It doesn't have to be a doctor. There are many people out there, resources, depending on where you live, obviously, that are out there for people. This video series, other videos like this. The point being here, if you know you have a problem, you want to change it, and you're having a very difficult time doing that, remember you cannot do it alone. That does not mean you're a failure or you're a loser or whatever. Okay, nobody makes difficult things happen on their own. Very few people, if you will. And actually asking for help, reaching out, connecting with other people act, will empower you will increase your capacity for resilience and well-being, as I like to say. It will offer you a pathway forward, and connecting to that pathway is a huge process of any behavior change. So remember, you might be one of those unique individuals, but you can't do it alone. And by reaching out for support and help, it enlivens you. It brings more purpose, more motivation, more inspiration to your journey. Sometimes in the beginning, that can obviously be really difficult. I had to be really at my bottom before I could ask for help. And a bottom is described as when you decide to stop digging. It took me, as I've mentioned before, 16, 17, many years before I could hit my bottom, surrender and ask for help. My hope for you is that it doesn't take that long. You don't have to be 30 years old and wake up one day and realize it's time to change. Maybe you're older than that, whatever the case may be, doesn't matter. The point is, if you want to change, you can't do it on your own. Asking for help is a wonderful thing to do. Okay, please like this video, comment down below, share it with somebody who you think might find it useful. Subscribe to this channel, consider supporting us on Patreon. I hope you found this helpful. I'll be back with video number five out of eight in the series. I wish you all the best. Peace out. I am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video. Please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content. And otherwise, have a great day. Peace out.